Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Hello. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Arthur Bergeron. Uh, I am an elder lawyer. I work at Myrick O'Connell. Myrick O'Connell is a firm of about 56 lawyers. We do all kinds of things, but I do nothing but this. People often ask kind of what is elder law? Elder law is the cluster of legal issues that the people have to deal with typically when they've retired. And they've got a couple of basic goals after they've retired. First of all, they want to make sure they don't run out of money before they die. And then secondly, they want to make sure that as to anything they have left after they die, that it goes where they want it to go, not necessarily to the nursing home or to the government or to others. And so my goal is to help people figure those things out. Um, so what we're going to talk about today primarily uh, is an issue that comes up a lot. I've often had folks, this is, my typical clients are Frank and Mary. Frank and Mary, uh, they live at home. Uh, their, their goal is to die and be buried in the backyard and when they die and after they die they're going to divide up what they have among their kids. They have a home, it's worth about $600,000 now, so it's a nice house, it's, joint, it's jointly owned. Uh, the, he has an IRA worth $200,000, they have an annuity of $75,000 and they have bank accounts worth about another $75,000. So their total assets are about $950,000. Frank uh, gets a social security check every month of, uh, of $1,500 and he gets a pension of 500, so his total income is 2,000. Mary had been working when she was younger, so she gets her own social security as opposed to just getting half of Frank's. So she gets another 1,000. So they've got a total income of $3,000 a month. So they're gonna be okay living at home, as, in, in, they've got no mortgage, uh, as long as they don't have serious medical problems. Um, and if they have medical problems like, you know, serious medical problems like cancer or diabetes or any of these big things, they're still going to be okay because Medicare is going to cover all that cost. But, um, and by, but if Mary or Frank get dementia and, and, and they, or any, and from any of the diseases like Alzheimer's uh, or Lewy body or a number of others that cause dementia, they're going to have a real problem because Medicare is not going to cover those kinds of costs. They're not going to cover the cost of helping somebody dress or making sure that somebody doesn't get lost, right? So, so peop, those folks are concerned about those issues. They have, there are their three children, by the way, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Peter is a lawyer out in, in New York. He's a big time New York City um, lawyer, makes a lot of money. That's gonna be important as we go along. Uh, Paul is a high tech guy, he's in San Diego. Uh, and so they, he's, he is occasionally seen, Every, they're all close. And Mary is the, the designated daughter, right? Typically, everybody has a designated daughter. Sometimes it's a son, usually it's the daughter. And that, the goal of the daughter is to take care of things and to make sure that the parents are okay and to go visit and to do all those stuff. And you're gonna hear more about Mary later on. So, once again, if Mary has developed dementia, and by the way, their goal, Mary's goal and Frank's goal is, more than anything, anything in the world, I never wanna go to a nursing home, ever, ever. Please don't let me go to a nursing home. I'm very familiar with Mary. My mother died in a nursing home in 1991, and, and after she had made us promise a thousand times, and my father, well, don't send me to the nursing home. And then she got dementia, and she was at home with my dad for a while, and, and for about a year, actually. Then she broke her hip and went to the hospital, and dad couldn't take care of her anymore, so she went to a nursing home, and that's where she died. Uh, and that's when I started doing this kind of work. So, Mary and Frank really don't want to go to a nursing home. And they really, really want to stay at home. And that's great. That is the right place for them because the nice thing about home is that even if Mary has pretty serious dementia, she's always going to know at home where the salt and pepper is and where the bathroom is. She's never going to forget those things. So it's the right place to be as long as Mary is safe, as long as she's safe, as long as that home 
she knows she's not going to fall when she goes outside. But of course, that's a problem, you know, because we're in New England. We're not in Florida, you know. Um, as long as she knows that in the house, she's not going to end up leaving the stove on and, the, you know, everything's going to burn down or that something else is going to happen. So she needs to be safe. They, they both need to be safe. And they need to avoid what happens often when anybody has kind of early stage dementia, and certainly in later stages, and that is Frank stops calling anybody else. Nobody visits. They don't go out because Frank doesn't want to embarrass Mary. She's been, he's very, very concerned about making sure that Mary is okay and that nobody is, is, is ha having trouble with, with where Mary is kind of in her life. Now, so it may be that in that situation, an assisted living community is an ideal place. Whether Mary actually has dementia or whether they're worried about that, they want to be in a place where this is going to be the kind of place where they want to live in the future. So there are, the question, and that, that what I tell people is, when you're thinking about assisted living, fi figure out what you should do. Go see some. Don't go to just one. We're, I'm very delighted that we're here at Golden Pond today, which is really one of the most is, more established assisted living communities. It's been here one of the longest, right? It's, they've continued to diversify, and that's all great. But don't just go here. Go to a number of places and get a sense of what these places are like. It's kind of like when your kids are shopping for college. A lot of times you're going to find one that just seems to fit, that it might really work. Or maybe you don't, but at least you've done that. But once you've figured out if there is a place that fits, then figure out the money. And the reason why I say that is that most folks, especially people of Frank and Mary's age, once again, their big issue for themselves is they don't want to run out of money before they die. Right? They don't want to, these people grew up right around the Depression. They were born in around the Depression. They don't want to ever run out of money before they die. And so they're very concerned about that. And they hear the prices of assisted living and automatically say, oh, I can't do that. I'm going to run out of money. Right? So start by figuring out whether it's the right place. And then see how the money works. And I'm going to talk about the money, but I'm going to first introduce Jen Belisi, uh, who works here at Golden Pond, who's going to talk to you a little bit about how Golden Pond works and, and why, as a place to be, it may be the right place. Uh, and, then, and then she and, and her associate are going to deal with the kinds of, of plans that could be developed here to help people with that kind of socialization and other things. And then I'm going to come back and kind of talk about money. Jen? Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Here you go. So thank you for coming. My name is Jennifer Belisi. I'm the Director of Community Relations here at Golden Pond. Um, Golden Pond is, as Arthur said, one of the oldest freestanding facilities for assisted living in New England. They were really the model by which people used for assisted living today. Um, Golden Pond has got four different products here. We have traditional assisted living, we have independent living, we have a Jerry Psych unit, and we also have our Country View, which is our memory care program. So we service an entire um, array of different kinds of folks that would come into Golden Pond. Um, I know that we do have a resident here. We have family members here looking at Golden Pond. So if there's any questions that we can answer along the way, just let me know. Um, we all want to stay home. Our home is, is our, our love. Our lives are there. If it doesn't become safe any longer, assisted living is a wonderful alternative. We encourage people here to call this their home. It's not their apartment. It's the place to live. Um, and it's a difficult transition, and we often see that. But at Golden Pond, we consider this part of our family and we, we really want to integrate everybody into our community. And you'll hear us call it our community very often. Um, it's a social model. Nursing homes are medical models. Assisted livings are social models. And Marilyn McLean, our resident care director, can differentiate the two. So if somebody's level of care is required that does not fit into the Office of Elder Affair guidelines for assisted livings, perhaps they need a nursing home. Um, Almost home cooking. I love these pictures that Arthur puts on his slides here. We have a. I, can do, I can't do the cooking, but I can do the. Yes. Do the so our chef uh, has been here for 15 years. He's wonderful. He works with a nutritionist, 
and we have um, wonderful meals three times a day. We have snacks twice a day, and you'll get a, a good um, amount of different foods that, that come through here. Um, we have activities. Part of the social model of assisted living is activities. When somebody's at home, it's like Arthur said, if you, have, if you start to fail in your health, or you start to fail, in, or your partner is failing, you, you oftentimes want to stay close to home. You don't get out. You don't go out to dinner. You don't dine with friends. Really, the social piece starts to get affected. In assisted living, we're all here, and we're all integrated in the same space, and we have lots of different activities that can match with what you're interested in. We have book clubs. We have walking clubs. We have cooking classes. We have bingo. We have um, social trips and functions. We have speakers. We have events. We have a lot of different things. We have exercise groups. Um, things that, that anybody can partake in.